All right. Question of the day. Is Frost Shaman a good deck? Let's play three games and see how we go. So the deck list is on the right. Obviously it relies on the uh, Frost spells. Uh, it's about six in here. Somehow Wild Pork Cavern isn't one of them. Uh, along with the normal uh, fucking Shaman payoff of Bolna, Brian, McCaw, uh, Snowfall Guardians, Mutinous, and Brikan. And then the in between cards are things like Amalgam, uh, Cookie for healing, Canal Slogger for healing. School teachers to find that. Normally it's clear. Board clear is what you're searching for with that. Commander Nebulon for just value on five. And then when you get a chance after you've cast a couple of these wind chills. The bear on Glashy. Super satisfying to play. If you end up playing it, you've probably either already won or already lost. I've played a couple of games with this deck before. I'm not going to tell you my record. I'll save that for the end of the video. But, we'll see how we go this way. Gets off to a pretty slow start because you don't have schooling. You don't really have any turn one plays. Turn two, your best is probably Sleepbreaker, but even then that's not great against quite a few things. Trades. Okay. I was really hoping he didn't trade then. Would have made things easier. Hmm. I got a couple options here. I can totem wind chill and be greedy and hope that gets to three. Or just save frostbite for the mecha shark, potentially. Additionally, we could just play amalgam. Amalgam wind chill. That's probably the play. I don't think we need the value from actually the discovery part. I think we just need the body on the board at the moment. Ooh, that's a pretty good four drop. He played two, so yeah, that fits into the uh, frostbite turn. If he trades, I'm going to be pretty sad actually. Okay, see. So. Now, do we want to chomp that? I think we chomp it and play Amalgam. Wild Paw is super good to get out on four, but... I can't let that snowball, so... Let's chomp, see what we get. Okay. Four mana, three six. And a couple of trash things. I mean, jeez. It's probably Sucker Hook. Just because it's the cheapest big body. Like, I get 4 mana for 6 health versus 7 mana for 8 health. So, extra 3 mana for 2 more health. Because effectively, what it's doing is just eating up shots from. Mecha Shark. And it's a lot easier to play a 4 drop than it is to play a 7. Even though the 7 is the upside of Wind Fury. I don't think I'd ever actually uh, get to utilise that. So, I think this is the better play. Okay, this is a slow turn for him, so I think we can get away with playing Wild Paw. Snowfall is real solid as a follow-up. Maybe it was worth considering Sucker hooking in that turn. I don't think so. 
I think wild pool is the correct play. Okay, <clears throat> we've lost enough health that Canal Slugger should be able to get some value as long as he can't ping it down. So if we run into, say, the 2 4, might be able to get a double heal off it. We could also see how we go using the Snowfall Guardian this turn. That might be the better play. And then if he floods the board, we can play McCaw into Canal Slogger. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, does that mean we go face? I think we freeze it now. Yeah. That gives me more options for next turn. So this should mean, like, there's not enough room on board for him to have a Mecha Shark turn doesn't have Gaia yet, he hasn't reduced the cost of anything, so this turn should be pretty shit from him. And it leads into a really good turn from me. Ooh. I don't know if that's good or not. I don't think so, just because... Yeah, you're just sacking it. Yeah. Okay, so I got uh, 15 damage. Yeah, low-key, that's, uh, that's pretty good to go face with. Now we can take out a minion. 2-4 has more health, but he gets more stuff off having mechs. So we should probably take out a mech. Even though it opens up one board space, he can't do a lot with one board space. Mothership's about the best they can. I don't think they run two of Mothership, I think that's a one-off. This should be looking at lethal. Yeah. Well. This deck's OP. Game 2. So even that game didn't really rely on the Frost package. Every card I played was stuff that's included in the regular decks. The only unique cards really is uh, Farsight, Snowball, Canal Slogger I guess. And the command. Hex is really good in this matchup. You don't really have a good way of getting through the uh, mountain bear otherwise. Renathal deck, that's probably better for me than him. So we pretty much want to try to stall out till 7, play Mutinous, followed by McCaw, and try to win the game through that combo. It's like this is the... He's got a pretty fast opener. At least it wasn't a one drop though. Good totem, means he probably has to trade. What are we hoping for? Far sight or cookie would be best on three. Here goes. 
Sometimes this matchup gets uh, absolutely out of control due to the buffing of the early minions and this deck's weakness to the early game. That's a that's a pretty good answer as well, actually. Ramming me out would be pretty bad. The time has come cool. to dethrone our former master. So we can we can value trade into the one three, or we just take out the three damage on the Renathal, which I think is a better play. Little downside is because the cavern is at the end of your turn, the strength totem won't buff it. It will buff the school teacher, but it's kind of going into a bad trade if I use it that way. So it's probably better to get the wild pool going and trade. And then next turn, whatever I discover with school teacher, I can actually play it. And if I don't want to play it, then I can win chill. Yeah. Seems like a good wind chill target. His deck traditionally has very strong uh, five mana minions as well, so. Let's see what we get. Okay, Chain Lightning. That doesn't upgrade, so it stays at a rank one spell, so it's not too great. Spirit Mount. Turn that into a 4-6. It's probably Frostbite. I can even play it this turn. I don't think I'll... Uh, do I want to play it this turn? I don't think I do. I think it's Frostbite. But if we chomp this turn, then he gets a good trade. And if Rat King comes out, then I'm kind of busted. So I think we need a wind chill. And then value trade here. Okay. Now the question with Rat King is... Do we hex that? Oh, good. So he doesn't have a 5 drop. And get some nice value trades here. I think I might want to freeze this with a snowfall. It'll give me an 8 8 on board. Sets up for a mutinous turn. We could do some trades, play Sleep Breaker and Freeze. That would be three mana, but the other three mana is kind of wasted. Cause, I mean, maybe I cast Frostbite and Totem. Mm -hmm. I don't think I like that as much as getting a big minion. Do I want to push these face? Or hold it for next turn? Jeez, I don't know. I think I want to hold it. I don't think he clears me on with six mana. I can't remember what six drops he has though. Oh, it might be his um his hero card. Which isn't too effective against this board. Okay, sick. He's just drawing dead. So he's either got huge stuff in his hand or a bunch of spells that he can't really play. I'm guessing it's huge stuff. I reckon on 7 we'll see a mountain bear. Which means mutinous this turn should be pretty good. Tracking. Certainly you'd pick a mountain beast. A uh, mountain bear if you found it. He 
Here comes the big chomp. Pet collector, nice. That's a solid one. All right, let's do some value trades. Sets up pretty nicely for a Brukan turn with a heal. Oh, he's got nothing. Poor guy. Gee, so... What are these two cards then? What, one could, get, could be King Crush? I wouldn't even know what the other one is that he couldn't play for four mana. I think we just McCaw. Oh fuck yes. This is pretty much done. And if we do this. Anything he drops we pretty much hex it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> wow. Well, Blade. Two for two. This deck's OP. Alright, let's go into the third game. How many of my frost spells actually mattered that turn? None. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think any of them actually mattered. Alright, so Cookie's really good for healing, so we don't really need the Canal Slogger. Windchill. Oh, I guess we keep it in case he buffs his minions early. And then turn two, we might coin Farsight into Cookie. Or do we try to find something better, like a Cavern or a Command? Or a Sleep Breaker? No, I think with the Stall and the Heal, this should be fine. We'll go for it. Bolin is real solid. What He's got a turn. It? Ah, that kind of sucks. It's not worth wind chilling unless he buffs it. But we. Oh boy. He's quick. I think we cookie. Because even if he value trades it off, I still get the weapon which can deal with the peasant. It sucks that he's already drawn two off the peasant though. I didn't think they normally ran the click clocker. I guess it makes sense with their two drop that dredges. Okay, he's kind of stalled out on tempo, which is nice. So I think, I don't think we need panic here. I think we can just play Farsight. Double wind chill doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Amalgam, sure. Okay. We're almost definitely going to have a Murloc up next turn. Murloc, uh, sorry, Gorlock Ravenger draws Mutinous for sure. And another Amalgam, so it draws two. I think we go the Chieftain. I don't think he value trades here. If he didn't value trade into Cookie, I think he... I think he's going pretty smog. 
Carney kind of sucks. I think we can test for it with Windchill. And then if he... If he cancels the Chieftain, then so be it. Huh. Yeah, I think we... I think we have to test, right? Okay. He's countering a minion. Do we just throw it away? Yeah, I think we do. Trade into that because it's got the potential to get bigger. Okay. Baron is online. Still going pretty quick right now. Don't have a good frostbite target, which kind of sucks. I feel like it's got to be wind chill into wild boar. We probably hit into the uh, saber as well. Or we freeze the saber. So then he doesn't get a sunken. Jeez, I don't know whether it's right or not. He's going to get one eventually anyway. I think we're just going to do it. This game definitely isn't looking as good as the last one. We got Brian, that's pretty cool. Okay. We still... I mean, I guess we can test for Ice Trap by trading here and trying to Frostbite it. Might be Freezing. Test for Freezing and Ice Trap. Yeah, Freezing Trap. Oh, Snake. Shit. Well, that's pretty damn bad. Not going to lie. I think we played Bolner here. Alright, the other one's explosive, so we know that for sure. This draws me a four, co uh, sorry, five cost spell. It's not really going to be enough. I think Lilypad's the play because if he drops a mountain bear here, we got an answer. Oh, that's so nice for an RNG card. If he doesn't kill Bolna and we get off a double snowfall guardian, that's actually pretty high. Okay, so we've got a couple of players here. I can lily pad. I don't think it's worth it, because then I just totem. And... I still take damage from the board. He only requires, like, a... Leo... There's so many lethal combinations. I think we freeze everything and hope that he doesn't have a... Uh, King Crush, and then we can hero power next turn. Ah, uh, hero. Next turn, not hero power. That hurts. Oh, nice. That's a good result. Okay.
Canal Saga heals for 6. There's nothing that goes with it, so it's got to be Brukan, so... We should do some trades first. Because then the heal applies to everything. Okay. Then we do the AoE plus the heal. Heal. AoE. Then we can trade. Get rid of the amalgam. Save the freeze. Is this where we pop the explosive trap? Stops the dredge. Yeah, I like that. Take a little bit more damage. But I do have the canal slogger here. So this canal slogger into lily pad's a good play here. And then that... That sets up pretty nicely. Oh, sunken could be scary. Nice. Holy shit. Okay, kind of scared. Lily pad's not active. Uh, it's not really good enough either. I mean, it's pretty good though. No, so we heal for six. Trade in here. Trade in there. This represents a lot more damage. That's 12 plus 3. Yeah, got to try. The only heal left in my deck is Canal Slogger. Uh, maybe School Teacher. This could be bad. Could be a snake. Uh. Snowfall Guardian probably get me under trouble momentarily. We're on eight mana. Nice. What the fuck was that? I don't understand that quick shot. That was super strange. Oh. That's pretty nice. So we pretty much have to hit the... We gotta do this. Ah. I want to try to get multiple hits off the slugger. So if we trade, say, this, and we can do it this way, this gives it one life. So he trades two in. God damn it. Really need to heal one. Oh no, that's seven damage. We might be using lily pad just so the canal slogger has a soft target. Be inter interesting to see if he chooses to trade here. It shows a lot about his hand. Oh no. Oh okay. This could be really good. Oh no. Alright.
do I think... Wait, wait, how much damage do I have? That's 23 plus 6. Is 29. Oh, I got lethal. <laughs> oh, I'm stressing so hard, but I'm sitting here with fucking lethal. Three from three. Well, turns out this deck is completely busted. Beer on Glashishi. Pretty much carried every game that I played. So, to reveal the stats, obviously we're three from three, so this deck has a 100% win rate. But what it actually looks like is I was split exactly on 33% win rate before this little session. So that's pretty good. As you can see here, I'm playing a lot of uh, rogues, hunters, mages. So Smiley, you might say, why didn't you add a game of you actually winning with Baron instead of the other cards? Well, I realised that, and I'm going to show you the next couple of games. So, game one there, we beat a rogue, we kind of just had all the answers, he was playing a death rattle version, and we won. Now we're versing this hunter. Pretty tricky little matchup, the old hunter. You rely pretty heavily on the hex for the mountain bear, as previously stated. Um, I decided to keep bear on in my hand, which I've been doing a lot more lately and it's getting me heaps better results than what I thought. I thought it would be a dead card until like maybe turn 9 or 10 but you can pretty reliably drop him on 7 even if he's only got 2 charges up and then rely on McCaw or um, yeah pretty much rely on McCaw to get the rest of the work done after that. It's still a super powerful play. So I think I'm absolutely killing it this game. It's tricky, but I feel in control because Baron's about to come out. And I get to drop drop him in two turns time. So I even get Bolner, so I'm like, this is going to be huge. Anyway, so he kills Bolner. I drop it anyway because I think it's a pretty good turn along with the freeze. I get three out. I'm like, feeling good. Feeling ready. He drops Hydrolodon. That's pretty bad. And now I'm like, okay. Okay, I can full clear here. This is fine. We've still got all the tempo in the world. And then my brain turns to the size of a pea. And I do this. Let's see if you can spot the misplay. Yep. And that's exactly how that game ended. I held on for a little bit, but I was pretty much cooked from there. Then I lost to a quest hunter, because that's pretty much an auto-lose for a lot of decks. Beat the mirror in the shaman, interesting enough. It wasn't really a mirror, he was playing a, uh, like a rainbow version with all the different, with multicaster. And then we run into a druid. So druids... Pretty weak against wide, healthy boards. Anything they can't clear with uh, Scales of Nixia. So I think Baron should get quite a bit of value here. I've got my one Frost spell, and now I just need to uh, curb my enthusiasm. Because if I see anything with three health, my lord does my temptation go through the roof, which you'll see throughout this game. <laughs> This card's pretty scary as well, this new one that scales upwards. I can kill it if he chooses to scale it with Frostbite and trading my dude in, but if he drops a small Torn or something, I'm in a lot of trouble. But, he plays all his mana, so I don't really have to worry about it. And I can just kill it off. Push face, get a big board, try to make his turn 6 where he wants to drop his... Uh, Presta, try to make that as difficult as possible because he's he's going to have such a slow turn. It's after that is when he scales like crazy. So, I don't know if you're seeing it, but I'm seeing the 3 health and boy is it juicy. I really want to justify it. There's only really one play here if you look at my cards, but jeez, Frostbite Totem. Never been more tempting. But, I make the correct play. Build a board, get it going, expecting Presta. He goes Guff instead. 
thought that was pretty surprising. But now that he has Cold Tooth Mine, turn, I guess, seven, six for him, whatever he's up to. The next turn, it's going to be a Presta. So I just want to drop the biggest body I can. I'm not going to get to use the heal, so that's not really an issue. Baron only has one charge, so I don't mind overloading and missing the dropping him on seven. Because this also gives me a chance to Frostbite, which is super good in this matchup as well. Druids are pretty reliant on their spells, especially when they don't have many cards and they really want to draw into all their dragons. So we're looking pretty good, looking pretty solid. So far things are actually working out for us. Manages to clear a little bit of our board. We're not too worried about that though. I still feel completely in the driver's seat because I know I've got beer on coming up along with a couple of macaws and brand. So unless he has multiple death wings or something absolutely gnarly, I feel like it's going to be pretty difficult for him to deal with. Especially because of the pressure I've already applied. He's below half his starting health points, so... Hit him with a wow, because no one knows what this card is. Can he answer it? Your Sarah isn't bad. But this really wasn't the threat, it's the next wave. This was just getting the battle cry out and about. Frostbite coming into a bit of play there. Alright, could eat. I don't think eat's the right choice because he's got a lot of shit Ysera cards in his hand. Let's just get a huge fucking board. I think back in Valley, decide not to do it because I think this is the kill, kill turn. So I think I'm just going to Frostbite my own dude to make his turn as difficult as possible on my strongest turn. And then just grab... It doesn't really matter here, it's pretty much never going to be played. Probably should have been Fire Elemental just so I could bypass Taunt, but whatever. So this game's pretty much wrapped up at this stage, unless he can deal with this. Even if he can, I've got another Macaw. Emerald Drake's a great start. Because now that he's played his Ysera, he doesn't have the mana because of Frostbite to play Ysera Awakens. And that's pretty much that. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please stick around. Tell me what you thought of the game. Give me some feedback. Love you all. See you next time.